Welcome into Hoops Forum, a production of Radius Athletics and a Quick Timeout podcast. I'm Tony Miller, and I'm joined once again this week by my co-host Randy Sherman. Big thanks to our sponsors over at 323 Sports. Summer is on its way, which means it's time to start thinking about those summer camps. Your campers will love the 323 Sports Performance Camp t-shirts, which start at an incredibly low price of just $7.99. To find out more, visit 323sports.com or you can contact a sales rep at sales at 323sports.com. They'll be sure to do it right for your summer camp program. Randy and I, just a little behind the scenes, uh, each week there's at some point early, hopefully early on in the week, sometimes later. <laughs> sometimes uh, at the 11th hour. <laughs> sometimes at the 11th hour, there will be a, a Twitter or text conversation back and forth. Hey, what do you want to talk about this week? Mm-hmm. And I thought this was perfectly timed. Uh, I got just a DM in my inbox last night from a coach who was asking about some Princeton offense and uh, Randy spent a lot of time the last couple years especially looking at Princeton and even here recently um, has has been doing some breakdowns with different teams if you've been watching the show you've seen some of those and uh, we're planning to put all those together so that you can get them all in one place at Mm -hmm. at some point and that video will include what we're going to talk about today. So okay. um, I had asked you, Randy, a few weeks ago when we were talking about Princeton-ish mm-hmm. offenses like the Furman Paladins. A uh, question I'd ask was, you know, a coach who wants to implement this, where should they start? And you gave a couple suggestions I thought were really good. If by chance somebody didn't get to see those, I'll ask you again. Where would you start? And let's go ahead and just let that bounce into what we want to talk about today. Yeah, I would say I would start by as a uh, for the coach who's maybe wanting to become a student of it or 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 grasp grasp the offensive system, um, which can be can feel like a lot. Um, I would start by identifying the shapes, the the different you know whether it's what we're going to talk about today, the chin shape, whether it's low post point open or which is another way of saying five out and all of those shapes and how they interplay. So when you know your shape, then you can kind of start to see the options from those shapes pretty intuitively. So that's one place I would start. The next place I would start is start with the skills that it takes to play it well. And that's cutting, that's passing with either hand, that's, that's ball handling with either hand. Um, And that until we can kind of do those things and and apply the skill with the know how, you know, we we got a pretty big mountain to climb. So um, that that's where I would start. Um, And, you know, I would say that Princeton's is something you could go full out like I'm going to do the whole thing, man, like we're going to do it front to back that everything, the full package. That's that's available to you as a coach. I would say also, too, you could just say, well, you know, I like this part of Princeton and almost like go a la carte. Like I'm going to extract that. I like point or I like chin or I like I like low post or something. And and that's going we're going to just do that. And maybe we've got to make a tweak or two to sort of make it, uh, you know, um, stand alone without the other phases entering it in, you know, entering it from one phase or exiting from it to another you might have to do some, some things to make that, but, but that's also what some programs do is like um, they just run point or they mostly run point or they mostly run chin. So um, that's why I thought the topic today of, of chin would be a good way where we could sort of say, okay, Princeton's a pretty broad topic. How could in a 30 minute show or less, like could we go a little deeper into one specific phase and that today that's what we're going to do with chin so today chin and don't turn it off if you already know chin yeah no because randy's going to talk about the basics here at the beginning but if you want to fast forward a little bit you kind of been in princeton for a little bit going to give some things towards the end as well and then if you're also listening to this only you probably want to go back and watch we got diagrams it's another one of those that we've incorporated both the fast model diagrams as well as some video that goes along with it mm-hmm. and uh, we'll try to direct you to where you can find more of those towards the end here but um, i would definitely encourage you to go back and watch it at some point so i'll go ahead and bring it up here on the screen here randy and you start wherever you want yeah i would say um you know what you see in the first frame like i said when you asked me the question where do i start 
uh, the shape. So in frame one of the four you've got on the screen now, the first frame, I want to be. I want to imprint on my mind when we look like this. You know, two guards, two forwards, and a and a post at the elbow on the ball side. That's chin. Like that's what that shape is associated with. I need my players to be able to look and see. Like okay, this shape really is speaking to me to, that that we're going to be in chin action on on a, a certain pass. Um, so. That's that's what I would say. You know, you see the post is at the ball side elbow. Um, you can use chin as a call. It doesn't. It you. There are ways. I'm sure you could do it sort sort of like through flow or off the break or just set it up. But but um, I've also seen a lot of Princeton teams who use it as a bailout plan or like like um, almost like. Uh, let me give you a scenario like um, maybe we shoot, we miss, we get an offensive rebound, we play it back out and like, okay, what are we going to do? We need to reorganize. And a lot of Princeton teams, that chin is that for them. They'll just build build chin really quickly and get into uh, and get into chin maybe off of an offensive rebound or when or when the offense gets a little discombobulated somehow and, and you know, we need to kind of reset. That's chin for a lot of Princeton teams. In the second frame, what you see is, is the passes that sort of initiate the action. Chiefly a guard to guard pass, the pass across the top. So we've got the post at the ball side elbow. We make a pass across the top. What I want player one in the second frame there to do is sort of pause for just a count, just a count. And on air time of that second pass, the pass from two to four, from guard to forward, then leave off that back screen. So the script is kind of pass, pass, and then throw it to the shuffle cutter if they come open. So just to count to make sure that we're going to go from two to from guard to forward, from two to four in the diagram you see on the screen. One thing I would advise is on, on the, the pass to the shuffle cutter, if you sort of see the conditions before the cut that, that might lend you to believe that this is about to come open, be aggressive with that pass. Like, we're like, let it rip, man. Like, let's do it. Um, trust your eyes and, and do it. In the third frame, I'm going to walk you through what player four would be seeing or, or sort of evaluating when we've made the, the guard to guard pass. Um, and, and the, the, you know, player one cuts off the back screen and is headed toward the rim. You know, we're usually they come open around the charge circle or, or you know, right at the rim. Um, three conditions I want to see met before I that four is looking at to like, hey, I'm going to let it rip if I see all three of these. And that is one is X1. And I'm talking about the third frame on the screen right now is X1 taken out by the screen. Like did five really get them solid screen is five sort of up and, and pressing up is X5 sort of up and pressing up on five? If they are, they're probably not going to be able to help at the rim. If they're really up, you know, almost like, you know, flesh to flesh with, with player five. Is X3 inside or outside? Like in my diagram that you see in, in the third frame, X3 is is outside. They're not in helping. They're outside. They're, they, um, so if kind of all three of those things are what you're seeing, let it rip. Let it rip. They, they, they we got them right. So now, um, most people will will do one. Will you know either hedge with X five or switch that or something to sort of like take away the layup potential on the chin cut, right? So um, then we we would we would um, we would kind of come off of, you know, don't throw it if it's not, if it's not going to be there, if those conditions aren't met. Does that make sense? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. And then, and then now then what would be, we we've run the cutter off the back screen. You see in frame two that we don't throw it. They continue on to that corner and, um, and uh, five would, would set this, what's called a drift screen. Uh, oftentimes I call it a top flare it, you can set it up like a, di a drift screen, like I have diagrammed in the fourth frame, where the passer who went ahead and turned it all the way to four is now going to receive this screen. And how I have it drawn is how a lot of 
you know, sort of traditional Princeton team set it up. You see player two sort of walk in toward the elbow, press that foot that's closest to the ball into the ground and push back and come off like a, a flare and drift off of it to where we throw it to them. Three would drop down to the corner in frame fourths to open up gap space. And we want them to rip it through, immediately rip it through and attack that space. And we're going to see all of this on film today, but I wanted to walk through what I'm seeing, what initiates initiates the passes, the timing, what I'm looking at to determine whether I throw it or not. Um, I think all of that is important to detail. Yeah, that's good. That's good. And and like you see there in the first frame on this next slide you brought up would be we you know two through it to four and then sits up for that drift screen. We get it back to them. Sometimes it can look like a ball screen. Like I get it on the ball side of the of that screen and I pull it through and it just behaves like a ball screen. Sometimes it's almost like I moved off the screen and I just catch it on the other side of the screen and go right into a drive. But if three drops to the corner, like you see there, we got lots of space to attack over there. And that, that's really what we want to get to. Well, my advice would be if you're coming down the court, you get right into chin, let's get to the drift action as quickly as possible. That's where we're going to crack the shell penetrate the defense, get some help, collapse the D and get to our driving kick and game and get them on the run and keep them on the run when we create that advantage off the drive. Now, in the second frame on this slide, we are assuming that they defended that and we don't, we, we go off the drift screen, but we don't get the return pass. So we curl the drift to the rim. Sometimes maybe they'll trail me around that and I'll come open at the rim like you see there in the second frame on this slide. I curl the drift to the rim. If if I don't get that, I'm going to continue to the corner. And then now we've got some different options where, depending on personnel, your offensive style, that, that could sort of happen next to give the offense a bit of flow and connection to keep the, you know, the show goes on. So how does the show go on? I curl the drift. I take it to the rim. I don't get it. I exit out. Five could pop, which you see there in the second frame. And that would take us in the third frame to five out where we could get into a dribble ad or, or, you know, cut one through and throw ahead to the next guy and play a side ball screen, zoom. You could do all kinds of things from that shape. So, you know, we, we, we went chin. We didn't throw to the back, the shuffle cutter off the first screen. We didn't hit the drift. He curled the drift, took it to the rim and, and keep, keeps going to the far side. And we play to the screener who, who could pop out. We could also, in that last frame on this slide, if I screen for him, but maybe personnel-wise, that's not a guy you want popping out, you know, 25 feet away from the basket. They're your, they're your big. You want to keep them at the elbow at the most. So you could, you could play to them there at the elbow. They just set that drift screen. The guy curls the drift just, just the same, but instead of popping and, and, and getting to open or to five out, he gets to the elbow, and if you'll go ahead and advance it, you'll see – You'll see now we've got the but we played to the screener and we're in what's called corner. Some coaches call this jungle. Some call it corner. I, I call it corner. That's the kind of older term for it. Um, and we have what if you are a Princeton aficionado, you'll recognize some of the same options in point. We can run from corner. We hit the guy at the elbow. Four does, and they can run middle over or screen away just on the side rather than on the top, like in point. Does that make sense? Yeah, it makes total and, sense. Yeah. And then like, and sometimes the five man will set the screen and his man will show on that guy curling the drift and he just shows his hands to the ball and get an elbow jumper right there. Um, um, and if we play to him, you know, now the passer would be going, they could screen down they could cut middle or they could go over the top. We could hand it back to the player going over the top. If they don't, they would get in a screen over there. Five could turn and we could run a split over there on that side. Um, so let's get back in, in the second frame of these three on the screen to, you know, we, we, we curl the drift. We don't get, we don't get any, anything there. Four doesn't e four doesn't play it to the screener. They don't play it to the cutter for the layup when they curl the drift. So that player two in this diagram would continue on out. They don't play it to five either popping or sort of showing their hands of the ball at the elbow. 
they have the ball, and we just sort of reset Chin by dribbling up to one of those guard spots. Player three would come square the top with me, and now we'll just make a guard-to-guard pass and run it again. So if you wanted to, to say run Chin as a continuity, that's how. We'll run through that. We reset it. We dribble up, square the top, and we go right back to it on the next guard-to-guard pass. And we've got the same thing where we make that we're on air time of that second pass in red there. We're going to make the chin cut, uh, the shuffle cut off the chin screen and get right back into it. That was really fast. I went through that like, whoo. Yeah, that was great. Yeah, I have seen at the college level, I've scouted teams that this is literally all they do. Uh, it's this plus what are we going to do when we get the throw it back to the five at the yeah. top of the key? So if you can figure out what you want to do, you know, the zoom, like you said, you could zoom out of it. Um, you can send the, the four down into a, a dive and then turn around and post up. Yeah. Um, yeah. What, yep. That's literally all they do. And then they bring it. It basically shapes back up to the original form that you had. And then you just run, run it again. And it's been effective. Um, you know, I think, I think sometimes, especially, so, you know, I coached at the high school level. So, Man, early early on in the season, I always dreaded like like say maybe within our first two or three maybe five games, I always dreaded seeing a team that sits a lot of back screens. Like mm-hmm. I was like, man, my, my young team or this this group that's new to me or something, we're gonna go get back screened all night long and just give up layups and look really silly. So there's something about a back screen that 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 I don't know if it's uh, probably poor defensive coaching and preparation on my part, but but like, man, we get in that second game of the year, we're playing some coach that's been at his place 10 years and runs a bunch of back screens, and we just look like we've never even practiced. I keep I keep scheduling the same guy the first game, so I don't even get a one game under my belt. I'm so yeah. scheduling this. And it's always – it's the back screen, and then it's also the flare screen. I have the similar feeling towards those – both of those. I, I don't feel like I've ever been prepared – or prepared them completely for it. I think, I don't know that a lot of, I'm sure there are some that are out there that are listening to this that they do, but I just don't know a lot of high school coaches that even use a lot of flare screens. And so yeah. defending them and how you want to defend them. And especially at the college level when you're usually, it's not as easy as, well, let's just switch it. It's not that big of a deal. It right. usually is a big, big deal because I've got mm-hmm. a, a true big man finally that I'm either, I have on the floor or they have on the floor. And so, um, yeah, between those two, it, it usually doesn't go great until we figure it out by the second quarter or something like that. Yeah, so the two things we just mentioned, back screens and flare screens, this is both of them <laughs> in succession. So, nope. so yeah, um, a problem sometimes. So, yeah, that's sort of like a primer on how to go from chin to the drift, look at looking maybe connect it with corner or open or f- aka five out or or reset it and run it again so those are all things that are on the menu of things you can do so good you brought up the video so we can we can now look at examples of this from this is a video that's sort of a hodgepodge of 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 teams from small college men's there might even be some women's on here i can't remember but but um yeah, so if you'll start it from the beginning, we'll 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 um, we'll we'll go through that. And the first um, the first one is Holy Cross, I think, which is um, you. This is from a, a few years ago. I think the coach that coached them then, Coach Carmody, who was a, a Pete Carrill person, coach at Northwestern and Holy Cross, Princeton runs in his blood, you know. So um, yeah, so you see that setup now. One thing. I would say that's important that I didn't mention when we were looking at the diagrams, pause it right there. Keep it paused there is one of the things that we want with chin is we want to all five of us be a free throw line or higher. We're lifting the defense and we're, we're compressing space between the free throw line and the half court line and to create space at the rim. So when we lift the defense and we run the cutter off the back screen, which we've already talked about being sort of tricky to guard sometimes, we, we're, we're coming open at the rim for a two-pointer that even average players can make, right? So so you'll see this here where they went they made, they made went guard to guard, and I think right where you have it paused, they've made that second pass from guard to forward, and the guy's going to sprint off the back screen. Sometimes you'll see te- teams go on the, on the far side of the back screen. Sometimes they'll sort of angle that screen and come in front of the screen. 
it it's it's really neither here nor there necessarily. And you can just, and, and you see here that it, it came open. Even a, a a college team had a hard time when the ball moved and the and the and it was done at speed. The chin the the shuffle cut came open at the rim. And you see there it came open a little bit late, like right at the charge circles when the guy was open. So same set up here. Holy Cross again, all five players that go guard to guard off the back screen and, and, and it comes open and we get the catch literally like almost under the rim here. So the next um, team is, is Nebraska Wesleyan, a D3 team that, that runs a lot of Princeton actions. Um, they go forwards out into chin, which is uh, run it back just a little bit if you can which is a dribble handoff on one side and an exchange on the other, which just keeps us in the same shape once we sort of dribble handoff on one side, exchange on the other. We, we got it, still got a two-guard front, and, and we go guard to guard off, off, of the, off, of the, off of the chin screen after the guard to guard pass. See, this time that Nebraska Wesleyan, they go on the ball side of the cut instead of the back side of the, of the, mm -hmm. of the, cut, of the screen. I'm sorry. Yeah, so here's forwards out the chin again. Get the screen. Now you see the drift screen there. They curl the drift, and it, that comes open at the rim. They curl the drift, and that comes open at the rim. Um, you can see there how after I hit, they made the second pass, the guy sort of walks his man in a little bit toward that elbow and then presses back off of that screen. And, he, and it, when his man trails, he curls the drift to the rim. And, and they come open literally inside the charge circle. Here's Holy Cross in the NC, or well, playing a road game at Kansas. Um, guard to guard pass. Here comes the guard to forward pass. And the guy's already sort of coming off the chin screen. Let's see how what they what they get into on holy on this holy cross clip. I think they get into the drift drive kick. So um, run that one that run that one back again and let's just watch it uninterrupted. Um, that's that's that th this is uh, you know he caught the drift and he drove it and they helped and 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 draw and kick on the on that op that that open floor side of this of the court. He ripped it through on the catch drove it into that gap i'd like to see that guy standing on the inn in kansas a little like more into the dead corner but his man his man helps on the drive and we 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 get to it we get to the drift um some coaches call that ddk drift drive kick ddk off the off of the drift screen drift drive kick And um, yeah, here's here's Holy Cross again, forwards out into chin, off the drift, curling the drift, play into five out, and now the screener is open after he's separated from that drift screen. If that guy has to show, hey man, we're about to, we're, this guy's curling this to the rim. I better show, or we're going to give up a layup. His man separates from that screen, and and um, and it creates a three point opportunity for that player, the screener, the five man. Yeah, so um, I like the basics of chin. I like how it can be; it can move from one phase of Princeton to the next, be that corner or open. I like how it can go; uh, it can be reset, like we showed, and be run as a continuity. But I also like how you can also run some sets and specials and quick hitters out of it. And I think we got one of those, maybe not on video, but a diagram. In, and and one of the things that we want from Princeton to our opponents is for everything to look alike. Like, oh, they're running chin. We know what we're about to defend. We're going to defend back screen, flare screen. You know, like uh, so it looks alike. The setup is alike. The initiation of it is alike. But then we're going to hit them with something just subtly different. And this is called chin crack, where we go guard to guard. We don't make the second pass guard to forward, and but one goes ahead and runs off the off of the that runs the shuffle cut off of the screen and sort of holds right there around the block or like kind of near underneath the rim or right around the block in the paint somewhere. 
and five is going to step, just sprint off the elbow after setting the screen and, and ghost screen and then and sort of veer off of that screen down and then set the screen for the chin cutter. Who, and and two's going to take it, drive it to the free throw line, and then find that crackback player coming off that screen. This might be knee to three. It might be uh, our best shooter is player one. All kinds of scenarios in which you can employ this. I love this. You probably run through, especially if you're using it as a continuity, you're running through the same thing over and over and over. And everybody thinks by the third quarter or the second half, it's the same thing. And then all of a sudden, bang, you got a wide open three point attack. And it looks the same from initiation. Like, oh, this is, we're just about to see this again. And then, yeah. and maybe your defense is playing the play or just sort of like kind of, uh, figured out how to defend they're in a defensive rhythm which i believe the team can get into if you run a lot of the same stuff over and over again um and but i think it's a really good special situation play for a princeton based team like we can we can teach something that doesn't depart from our offense but that gives us a tool for a special situation maybe it's need a three right Mm -hmm. yeah this is great Okay, so you've whet the appetite of people, and there are some who are starting to build out and others who have been running this and want more. Where would you point them? I would point them to um, hashtag Princeton Offense Tips on Twitter. Just click that or search that and and explore. I would point them to – I've got a couple playbooks, which you can find on my website, radiusathletics.com. where I kind of go through Princeton offense in volume one of my playbook. I kind of give my own little spin to some of the basic traditional Princeton stuff in volume two is like a whole different thing. That's mostly all chin and chin variations and chin sets. And, and it's kind of that got its own playbook, you know, basically Um, I would, I would point them there. Um, and then I would say I would point you to uh, maybe a few teams to look at. Uh, UConn women run a lot of chin. Notre Dame women used to run a lot of chin. So if you if you want to go back and find some of their games in the archives, you could do that. Uh, yeah. So those are some places I might I might send you. Uh, and then and then most recently our Furman talks that we've had, and then the video yeah. series that you put together, kind of that hybrid of. Princeton and five out and some special actions that coach Ritchie likes to do. Yeah. They'll get it. They they'll, they'll make a, they'll, they'll run a guy off of a chin screen to a shuffle cut um, with or without the guard to guard pass. And, and it's really dynamic stuff that they get into that, that, that um, they'd be another place I would point someone, but yeah. 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 So, um, you know, my hope for today in, in floating this idea was say, you know, talking for what have we been on 25 minutes or so uh, uh, on one specific facet of a topic that feels pretty broad to help you get a, a better and deeper understanding of of that, say, chapter of the book, right? Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Great stuff. I'm a lot deeper on one thing. And I think probably going to be quite a few people who are uh, going to want to find out more. And this is a great starting point. Uh, so great stuff. And one more thing I do want to tell you about a little under two weeks. Yeah. Randy and I on Tuesday, May 23rd, going to be doing a little two, three zone plus, I guess is what I'm calling it at this point. Yes. Uh, you can sign up for that. We'll have links there on our social media accounts, specifically on Twitter. Had people sign up already for that. So uh, looking forward to that. The way that's usually set up, Randy will talk for a while, usually 45 ish minutes. Mm-hmm. And then we do a Q&A at the end. There are additional resources, uh, drill books, videos, other things that are available to you if you attend that. Just kind of a, a web clinic that you'll be able to participate in from your living room or wherever you're you're studying. Do a little bit deeper dive into 2-3 zone, not just like your standard, but some additional things. So if you're looking to take your zone to the next level, uh, we'll have some stuff for you on that night. So be sure to look for that on our social media accounts. We'll have links to where you can sign up for that there. Thanks to all of you who joined us this week. If you missed any part of the live show, you can go back and watch or listen to any part. Just search Hoops Forum on YouTube. 
to watch the full interview, or you can go to any podcast platform and search a quick timeout to find the audio version of the show. For Randy Sherman, I'm Tony Miller. We'll talk to you again next time on Hoop.